Hey Broncos fans, Sam Brown here with the Broncos Breakdown, and on today's show we're breaking down some potential draft options for George Payton and the Denver Broncos on offense. I know it's something we haven't talked about a ton here on the show, so again just want to educate you and give you some names to think about as we get closer to draft night. The Broncos obviously hold the number 9 pick in the NFL draft and could find a really good value on offense if, you know, depending on how the draft unfolds, if some defensive players don't fall to Denver, I think an offensive player might be something to look into. Now, it is it does need to be said, they do have bigger needs on defense. There's no doubt about that. That cornerback and linebacker are arguably the two biggest needs for the Broncos this offseason. But some intriguing names at the top of in the top tier of offensive pro prospects in this year's draft. So we'll break down some names for you guys, buy a couple positions, and whether the Broncos really have any sort of shot or really would be a good fit at drafting a certain player. Now, if you want defensive draft targets, we've talked about them a ton, but if you want a video specifically with defensive prospects for the Broncos in the draft, I need you to like this video. The bosses here at Chat Sports said, hey, you got to get about 150 thumbs ups on this video before we let you do that one. So help me out. Mitchell Renz always says, this is how I feed my kids. This is how I put food on the table. So help me out. I'm a 22-year-old putting food for kids on the table that don't exist. But we need you to like this video. Give me some thumbs ups in the comments and hopefully if we get 150 or more you'll see a defensive draft targets video very very soon some quarterback targets to look out for here on the broncos breakdown by chat sports drew Locke's future at the quarterback position is a little shaky at the moment which is why we're going to break down some potential draft targets obviously has shown some flashes in his time at denver there's no doubt about that through two seasons but has also been inconsistent has dealt with some injuries at all uh, over his time in denver and the Broncos could be in the range to get a quarterback at number nine overall. Is Drew Locke the answer at quarterback? That's what a lot of us are wondering and want to know. If he's not, and the Broncos don't think he is, a lot of trade talks have swirled, but there is always the option of drafting a quarterback at number nine if the guy is there and you like the fit with Denver. So something to look out for here as draft season approaches what Drew Locke's future with the Broncos stands, where he stands in this organization. Now, should the Broncos draft a quarterback in round one? I want you to let me know in the comments se section what you think. Chat Sports is all about interaction here, and we want to hear from you. So you can type your one for yes in the comments, or you can type your zero for no. I don't think the Broncos should draft a quarterback at round one at this very moment. If they move on from Drew Locke, obviously it comes a much greater possibility. But, hey, I want to know from you guys in the comments. Type one for yes or type zero for no. The first quarterback prospect we'll jump into here on the show, Justin Fields out of Ohio State. Obviously, he has really impressed in his two years at Ohio State and showed some nice development as well across his career. I want to say doesn't really throw the prettiest ball, but it's accurate. It gets to the spots he needs to get to. He's got the arm strength, and he's got, of course, the athleticism to play at quarterback. In today's NFL, the mobility is there for him. He tends to hold the ball a little too long at times. Didn't have to make a ton of reads at Ohio State just because most of the time, their number one receiver was usually open with the, that stable of receivers that they have. But at the same time, he's an electric quarterback, arguably the second or third best prospect at the position behind Trevor Lawrence. And it'll be interesting to see if the Broncos think that he might be a good fit. You see his numbers. I mean, over two years, the production is there. There's no doubt about it. Over 50 touchdowns in his first season at Ohio State and just three interceptions. And less games this year, but still 2,100 yards, 70% completion percentage. 27 touchdowns and six interceptions and obviously he adds the, the the element on the ground as well you see just less than 400 yards or just less than 500 yards in 2019 a little less than 400 in 2020. Zach Wilson the next quarterback here on the list a dynamic guy who really broke out here in his senior season or in his last season at BYU an electric quarterback has the mobility again the arm strength has the accuracy to make those tight window throws Sometimes struggles with his footwork a little bit, but that's obviously something that can be shored up at the next level. And he hasn't really had to play a ton of elite NFL talent. So we'll see how his game kind of translates. But this is definitely a hot name in the quarterback draft market because as you see the numbers, he was absolutely incredible his final season at BYU. You see the jump really too from his first two years as a starter, about a season and a half really, didn't start the full 2018 season, but nearly as many passing yards in 2020 as the first two seasons combined 
43 total touchdowns and only three interceptions. The completion percentage jumped way up. And Zach Wilson is another intriguing option for not just the Broncos, but a lot of teams that are looking for an answer at quarterback. And third up here on the list, Trey Lance. This is a guy, this is the, the typical tools over not tools over tape because his tape was phenomenal, but you're banking on a lot of upside and you're banking on a lot of development with Trey Lance. Really shined in his one full season at North Dakota State. No interceptions. We'll jump into his numbers here in a sec, but no interceptions. He's got the arm strength. He's got the, uh, the athleticism. The accuracy needs to be fine-tuned, but this is a guy with all the physical tools you want in a quarterback, and at that point, it's just really making the jump to the NFL, being able to process defenses differently. But as you look at his numbers, I mean, his career passing stats at North Dakota State, 30 touchdowns, one interception, a completion percentage, a hair over 65%. This is a guy that really tore FCS defenses apart. Yes, they're FCS defenses, but still shine nonetheless. And in the running game, he also adds the element as well in his career at North Dakota State. Over 1,200 rushing yards, about 7 yards a carry, and 16 total touchdowns on the ground for Trey Lance. This is a guy that I, I think if you can put him in the right spot and you give him a year, he would really shine. So maybe not the best option for Denver, considering he still needs that extra year, but Trey Lance nonetheless is a fascinating prospect that a lot of people are going to have their eyes on leading up to draft night. There are some other quarterback prospects I want you to look out for leading up to draft night. Maybe not first round guys, except for Mac Jones, of course, the quarterback out of Alabama. I don't think drafting him at nine would be the right move for Denver, but definitely a guy to look out for. Kyle Trask and Kellen Mond, I think a couple day two quarterbacks. Kyle Trask has some upside, however, has really doesn't really have the arm strength that you would need to make all the throws. And then a couple options, uh, sleeper options in the later round. Davis Mills out of Stanford and Jamie Newman out of Georgia slash Wake Forest. I'll call it Wake Forest, but these are just a couple guys that, hey, maybe you can look at later in the rounds and see if you, you've got a backup option or something behind whoever the starter will be at quarterback for the Broncos. Name an offensive player you want to draft in round one. I want to hear it in the comments section. You can take the easy way out and say Trevor Lawrence if you want, but feel free to get creative a little bit. Maybe it's a running back, a wide receiver, maybe a guy on the offensive line. Doesn't have to be a quarterback. I just want to know one offensive player that you want to draft in round one. Let me know in the comments. As we look at the offensive line depth chart here, we're going to take a look at some Broncos draft prospects to look out for on the offensive line. For the most part, this is fairly set in stone. However, there are some questions. I think right tackle right off the start is, is, a, is a potential need for the Broncos. Jawan James, only three games played since he signed with the Broncos in 2019. And then you look at the interior offensive line, I think, as well. When you look at Glasgow and Reisner, two guys who look exactly the same, just different, you know, different hairstyles or different facial hair. But I think they're solid. But at the same time, if the right player is there when the Broncos are drafting, I think that presents maybe more upside in round one. It's certainly an option to examine. These are three players we'll break down here in terms of offensive line and uh, targets for the Broncos. Panay Sewell, Rashawn Slater, and Christian Darrisaw. I think this is one, two, three, the order that these prospects are ranked in terms of their ability in this year's draft class. And we'll start with Panay Sewell, I think, is the consensus not consensus, but he's pretty close to consensus best offensive line prospect in this class. He's certainly Tom Downey's top uh, offensive line prospect, and so I'm going to take that for what it is. You know, really shined at Oregon, opted out of the 2020 season, but didn't allow a sack in his entire, or sorry, excuse me, allowed one sack in two years at Oregon, and he did it all at about 18 or 19 years old. He doesn't turn 21 till this October, so still a guy with room to grow, but you see the frame. I mean, the dude is massive at 6'6", 330 pounds, but he moves really well. And so I think that he's the, he's the top tackle on the board. I, I, I wouldn't bank on him being available at number nine. I'd be shocked if he gets past Cincinnati at number five, honestly. But Panay Sewell is a very intriguing option at left tackle for Denver or even at right tackle. Maybe shift Garrett Bowles over to the, to the right side. But either way, Panay Sewell, a great prospect for the Broncos. Christian, or excuse me, Rashawn Slater, the uh, tackle out of Northwestern, up next on this list. Had a massive breakout season. Uh, or excuse me, sorry, he opted out of the 2020 season, but in 2019 really had a great year. His best tape was against Chase Young, who went number two overall, obviously, in 2019. He's got some length concerns, uh, not the longest arms in the world. He has a solid build at 6'3", but he might have the flexibility to where he'll play inside. 
I think he'd be more of a fit with Denver at right tackle. I think if you draft him, he starts day one maybe over Dewan James at right tackle, but certainly an option and gives you some flexibility on the interior offensive line as well. And then third up here, Christian Derisaw, the tackle out of Virginia Tech. Again, a very versatile lineman, and he had a breakout season in 2020. He started a three-year starter at left tackle for the Hokies and would likely slot in at right tackle should the Broncos choose to draft him in round one. He's a mauler in the run game. Very powerful player. He's a bully. He wants to put you on the ground and has some room to grow in the pass game as well. So Christian Derisaw, a third guy that I, that I like potentially in the teens if you choose to trade down. I don't know if number nine might be a little bit of a reach, but nonetheless, he's a very intriguing prospect with some upside that I think the Broncos could consider in round one on the offensive line. So I'll ask you right now, how big of a need is the offensive line for Denver? Put it in the comments section. I want to know what you guys think. Scale it from one to 10. One being best offensive line in the history of the league. No worries whatsoever. This isn't a need. They shouldn't even draft a lineman. 10 being, I don't see a single starter there. I think you, I don't think you want to, you want to draft offensive line across the board here. I think you're going to find some answers somewhere in between, but I want to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comments section, how big of a need the offensive line is for the Denver Broncos. Now, you may have missed this video the other day. We're about to get into a few trade down targets, but I had a full list one to seven on our video earlier this week. Now, you may have missed it also because we had a video later that day on some Von Miller and Justin Simmons news. We're going to keep you up to date here on the Broncos breakdown. You know, the majority of my job is as a producer, but I love hopping on, getting these videos done for you guys, keeping you updated. So if you want more content around the Broncos, you see this link below me, youtube.com slash Broncos TV. You can click that. You can hit the big red button below this video and subscribe. I Hopefully, you'll want more draft coverage like this. Draft season's rolling around, so don't miss out on any of the videos that we're doing here on the Broncos Breakdown. Hit that big red button and subscribe today. Now, the, the option to trade down for the Denver Broncos is certainly a potential and intriguing idea. And we're going to look at some trade down options here on the Broncos breakdown by chat sports. They have the number nine pick in the draft. However, there's always the option to trade down, acquire more draft picks and potentially get more, uh, more value from your draft class. I think if the, if they choose to trade down offensive line becomes a, a, a more uh, intriguing option because there are some quality uh, prospects in the teens and in the 20s who present some upside would need some fine tuning but present some upside for Denver so we'll break down all these names right now but before we do I want to ask you guys should the Broncos trade down from the number nine pick I've asked you before and I'll ask you again type Y for yes in the comments type N for no I, I, I have a feeling that a lot of you are open to trading down and, and the Broncos have been linked in a lot of mock drafts with a potential trade down but if you think they should trade down type Y for yes if you think they should stay put at nine or maybe even move up in the NFL draft, I want you to go down in the comments and type N for no. Four players that we'll look at, look at here, starting with Elijah Vera Tucker, the offensive lineman out of USC. A versatile lineman, played guard his first two years at USC before moving to left tackle in 2020, and that's where he broke out. Like I've said before, I like Glasgow and I like Dalton Reisner in the, off, uh, the interior offensive line. But Vera Tucker, simply put, has more upside than these players. And he's versatile as well and can find his way on the outside of the offensive line should injuries or other circumstances come about. Not the biggest need, like I've said, for the Broncos. Interior offensive line, I, I've always thought of it maybe a day two, day three pick to kind of shore up that offensive line or maybe a veteran free agent signing. But Elijah Vera Tucker does present some interesting upside for Denver in the, uh, in the first round, allowed just four sacks in his career at USC across three years. I think this is a guy that was consistent everywhere he went and could certainly provide a decent option for the Broncos later in the first round. Just like Tevin Jenkins would. You're going to start to see a trend here of offensive linemen. Tevin Jenkins, another guy with a lot of upside, um, a tools over tape kind of player. Uh, started, you know, all four years at Oklahoma State. Uh, 30, just under 40 career starts for Jenkins. He's a mauler at right tackle, similar to Christian Derisaw, where he's really good in the run game, wants to put you on the ground. And I think he's going to get drafted somewhere in the 20s. You could see him potentially even slip to round two, but I think 20 to 32 is somewhere of that range for Tevin Jenkins. Like I've said, Jawan James, only three games in two seasons with the Broncos. Is right tackle a need? We don't really know. 
and that's the, the, the real intrigue behind some of these guys, is that they could be a better player than a, and a better option than Juwan James. But we don't really know because we haven't seen a ton of Juwan James with the Denver Broncos. So Tevin Jenkins, a guy that I like, potentially in the later, uh, later part of that first round. And then Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan, uh, the tackle, another tools over tape player. This is a guy that shows a lot of upside, has the tools that you want in a starter at the NFL, just needs a little, a little refining and a little development at the next level. Was mostly a right tackle at Michigan, and that's likely where he'd played with the Broncos. Played some on the left side as well. He needs some developing, like I said, but he's got the tools to shine in the NFL. And he's another guy that offers some vers versatility to play on the inside as well, you know, depending on what happens uh, you know, throughout the course of a season. But Mayfield's an intriguing guy, another guy that you know, could find his way in the 20s, maybe even slip to day two. But I think he's got more upside than you'd imagine. And so I think he's an intriguing option at 6'5", uh, 320 pounds for the Broncos on the interior offensive line. And then a fun player here to wrap things up, Najee Harris, a guy that, like I've said, likely won't make it to the Broncos if they choose to trade down. I wouldn't consider him until the mid-20s, and it's not a major need for Denver. I've said this is, in this scenario, either Phillip Lindsay or Melvin Gordon isn't back for the Broncos next season. And at that point, running back becomes a bigger need for Denver. It's really a value pick if you want him, but the numbers are there. You've seen the athletic traits. This guy has shined. Uh, in, in a lead back role at the University of Alabama. Set the SEC single season touchdown record last year, 30 total touchdowns, which is just nuts to think about. Over, just less than 1,500 yards uh, in 2020, a little over 1,200 in 2019, but this is the guy with a ton of upside. People are gonna be asking whether him or Travis Etienne is the top running back in this year's class. I personally think it's Najee Harris because of the growth that we've seen. Always a highly touted recruit, and was just kind of waiting for his chance behind some of these other Alabama running backs that have come out. And now that he's, you know, now that he's had a chance to really shine, you're seeing the upside. You're seeing why they're talking about Harris in the first round, even though the running back position has been a little devalued in the NFL in recent years. So just another name for you there. You see the four names on your list, Elijah on your screen, Elijah Vera Tucker, Tevin Jenkins, Jalen Mayfield present three intriguing options on the offensive line, and Najee Harris, the running back out of Alabama, who I think is just dynamic, could pose an interesting, could pose an interesting option for the Broncos should they choose to trade down in the 2021 NFL Draft.